Hey, what's up, everybody? Dora Aldana here coming to you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. And today we're going to talk about how to insulate yourself from margin compression, rising interest rates, low inventory, and recession. Sounds like a wild adventure, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't that sound like lollipops, unicorns, rainbows, sunny skies, and just nothing but positive fluff tarts? Obviously, the you know, gauntlet of uh, what I've just shared there in terms of, you know, the buffet of suck, as I call it, is definitely impending, not to say there is an opportunity in the current market and future current markets, but the crowd is about to thin. There's definitely going to be some mortgage professionals dropping like flies over the next 6, 12, 24 months as all of these different factors start to converge and we start to separate the real marketing champions from all the rest because those who have been eating from the low hanging fruit those that have been drifting versus driving those that have been uh, in the complacency neglect mode and just been hoping that this uh, gravy train is going to last forever they're going to get their asses kicked if they don't step up the game and start driving versus drifting if they don't really start to be more intentional and purposeful about tipping the uh, scales of fortune in their favor with effective, highly strategic marketing, chances are they're going to be left behind by those who do. So it's really important that as we look at the current state of affairs with all the inflationary indicators and rising interest rates and cost of gas and cost of, you know, just, uh, you know, living, cost of living going up so significantly in a variety of different respects, not to mention uh, the fact that uh, we're seeing a convergence of this crazy seller's market, li limited inventory. And then of course, you know, all the financial pundits are talking about impending recession over the next 12, 15, 17, 18 months. And so, you know, obviously only God knows what's going to happen next, but it's not looking altogether positive from a sunny skies scenario. There definitely seems to be some storms looming and we want to be prepared for them. We don't want to be wishing we were, we want to be glad we did. And we want to be least and last affected by market downturns, not first and most. That's the big idea. Obviously, we can't eliminate the turbulence. That turbulence is going to be blowing against all of us, but we can mitigate its effects, uh, its effects on us by how we prepare ourselves and position ourselves to prosper in the face of these challenges. The goal here is not to have always sunny skies, lollipops, unicorn, and rainbows, because that would be delusional optimism, right? We're not here to be del delusional optimists. We're here to exercise accurate thinking and to win in the face of these challenges, to be able to turn adversity into opportunity and your competitors dropping like flies to take even more market share and to position yourself to build a recession-proof business in the face of all these challenges. So that being said, as a preface, let's dive in, shall we? Now, that being said, uh, the pregnant question begging to be asked right now is, are you, are you prepared to weather the impending storms? Do you have strongly, deeply rooted, fortified foundation in place such that when the storm hits, you're ready? that you're in a place where you're least and last affected by these market shifts versus first and most? Do you have that fortification in place? If the answer is emphatically hell freaking yeah, then we've got some work to do. It's time to roll up our sleeves and get to work, right? This is the time to prepare. Success is when preparation meets opportunity. And as the late and great Napoleon Hill once said, in adversity, there's a seed of equal and greater opportunity. In every adversity, there's a seed of equal or greater opportunity. So I'm not here to be a pessimist and to tell you the sky is falling. Falling. That's not what this is about. It's about winning the battle on the front lines of capitalism in the real world, knowing that the bullets are going to be flying and we don't want to be showing up to the gunfight with a butter knife. We want to roll up the freaking tanks. We want to take market ground, uh, market, market uh, share and take ground against your competitors. So that being said, these are some of the signs that you may be in a very precarious position and at high risk of revenue regression. Okay, so I'm just going to give you these again. 
I'll leave it to you to discern and decide whether or not you fall into any of these categories. But I want to just highlight them because I think it's important to just do a little self-reflection and self-evaluation and see where you are and how you measure up in these different areas that might put you in a high risk scenario to get your ass kicked as these various different uh, storms are impending. And as these converging factors start to magnify and amplify the challenges on the front lines, it's important to address them in advance with clear eyes and clear thinking. So the first one, when it comes to high risk, is over reliance on refis. Now, obviously, a lot of you have already started to see the writing on the wall. Chances are the faucet of refi revenue has already started to dry up. If you're anything like most, because as rates have gone up over the last couple months, chances are your refi revenue has dried up with it to some degree. Obviously, there's always going to be refi opportunity or refi money on the table. But relative to what you were making in 2020, 2021, chances are it's dried up considerably since then. True. So we want to make sure we're not standing on that one-legged stool because if you continue to overreach and over-rely on a rather precarious regressionary revenue source, it's not going to look good. That does not bode well, right? Chances are that's going to have you topple it to the floor if you're standing on a one-legged stool. That is not a solid foundation. So we want to shift more and more to the purchase market for obvious reasons. Now, another high-risk scenario is weak or anemic realtor partnerships. Obviously, you know, the most uh, recession-proof and most reliable source of business, regardless of rates, regardless of inventory, regardless of market conditions, is and always will be the purchase market. It doesn't matter what's going on, what kind of shit storm's happening with the economy. People are going to keep getting into the market, moving up in the market, getting married, getting divorced, and dying. And all those scenarios require transactions. And might as well go to you. But obviously, we want to get you positioned so you get that business versus your competitors. That doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design, right? So we want to build that dream team of top producing realtors who send you all their business all the time so that you are least and last affected by market downturns. Notice I said top producers, not the whining, simply complaining, jelly donut eating little producers who are the... First, to drop like flies in a market downturn, we want to get the ones that are deeply rooted, that own the lion's share of the inventory, the lion's share of the market share, the lion's share of the clientele, so, and who have the best five-star reputation, so that when the storm hits, they're the ones who are going to endure. They're the ones that are going to last. They have staying power. They've got longevity. You want to hitch your wagon to those people, not the people that are going to get their asses kicked and are going to be you know, tumbling the moment. Uh, a storm hits. That's not the kind of foundation you want to lay. So top producing realtors is really where you want to anchor yourself and you want to build a well-diversified dream team. We'll talk about that in a moment. The next high risk scenario that would put you in a very precarious position to regressionary income is no system for attracting top producing partners. So it's one thing to talk about. It's another thing to walk about it, right? We can talk about it all day long, but if you don't have a system to be able to book appointments with top producing agents and to be able to flip the script so that the realtor needs you more than you need them, to be able to have a situation where instead of them interviewing you, with your proverbial nuts and advice, we flip the script so that we're interviewing them so that you're holding the cookie, you're in the driver's seat. So no more gro groveling, you know, chasing, ass kissing, any of that. Instead, we flip the script. You got to have a system for that. You need to have something compelling, right? It's not enough to just offer great rates, great service, throw me a bone. That ain't going to work. It's not enough to just call 40 freaking realtors on a Monday and say, hey, I'm available to help any of your buyers. That's not going to work, especially in this crazy seller's market. You know, it's not enough to have pre-approvals. Uh, you, you and I both know pre-approvals are not enough. We need pre-approvals with a winning strategy to get them under contract. If you don't have those kind of strategies, chances are you're going to be left behind by someone who does. So we need those strategies and systems that are cutting edge, not bleeding edge and trailing edge. We need systems like that that can keep you ahead of the curve uh, when it comes to not only getting those buyers into your pipeline, but getting them under contract. Obviously, that's how you get paid. That's how your buyer's agents get paid. And that's how the seller's agents get paid. So we want to make sure everyone's getting paid. We need winning strategies to do that. And we need a system to be able to 
continually and perennially get in front of the best realtors in town and to be able to have posture. So you're not leaning in, begging, bribing, hoping, wishing, ass kissing, any of that. We don't want to have commission breath halitosis. We don't want to be the mortgage parasite, you know, the mortgage leech. We want to be the person who comes with posture where you know you have the cookie. You know that you're the bomb freaking diggity, not out of arrogance, but out of competence and confidence. And you notice chances are that confidence is bred through and by competence. You need to have both uh, and they're symbiotic and they feed each other. So we need to have a system to get the appointments. We need a system to get in front of these realtors. And then of course, how to get them eating out of your hand so that they start sending you all their business all the time and stick to you like super glue, put you on their speed dial. So if you don't have a system like that in place, chances are it's going to be very difficult because as all these refi crabs start crawling out from underneath their refi rocks and all clamoring after the same realtors, you're going to find that just having a pulse and fogging a mirror and saying you got great rates and great service is not going to cut it. We need something much more compelling. Chances are you've already noticed. The other high risk scenario that uh, definitely puts you in a precarious position at such a time as this is no system for getting your buyers under contract. No system for getting your buyers under contract. So we talked about that already, right? It's not enough to get pre-approvals. You can't pay your mortgage with pre-approvals. You pay your mortgage with clients under contract and closed deals, funded deals. And so if we don't get them under contract, obviously you're not getting paid. So it's really important we have some winning strategies for that. That's a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals hire us is to learn the secret sauce on how to do that. So if you don't have a system for that and you're just another Joe Schmo mortgage professional with just uh, another Joe Schmo buyer that's making an offer, uh, frankly, you've probably already noticed you can go 20 offers deep and still not get anything under contract. That sucks, right? That's a special kind of suck. That's a lot of frustration and wasted time, both for you and for the buyer's agent and for the buyer. So we want to be able to mitigate that. Obviously we can't eliminate that entirely. You know, it's the front lines of capitalism in the real world. You're going to have some that you just can't convert, but we want to convert as many of those as possible. So there are some really effective strategies for tipping the scales of fortune in your favor in that respect. If you don't have those, you're going to be left behind by those who do. And lastly, the other high risk scenario you want to be mindful of is over reliance on buying leads, whether it be buying purchase leads or buying refi leads. If you're, if you've been relying on buying leads to keep yourself afloat or to make a certain amount of income, chances are your income is going to drop considerably as we deal with all these converging factors with market compression, rising rates, uh, limited inventory, and recessionary uh, impact in the economy, because people are going to be more and more price sensitive, and they're going to be uh, much more inclined to shop. And if you aren't coming through some kind of third-party endorsement, where you're endorsed as the go-to mortgage professional, where they're pre-cooked, pre-tenderized, and hot for what you got, and predisposed to work with you before they even talk to you. Chances are they're going to stop you. And if you are living by the rate, you're going to die by the rate. And that's a very difficult way to do business, right? Chances are if you've been in the business for more than a week, you know that to be true. It's a very difficult and unfun way to do business, to have people shopping you and wasting your time and treating you like a replaceable commodity. As they say in Mexico, that's no bueno, right? That's not the way you want to operate your business. And buying leads puts you in a position where they don't know if you from a hole in the wall. There's no indoctrination. There's no one that's you know, endorsed you. You're just another Joe Schmo LO reaching out because they filled in some form. They forgot they even freaking filled in. And now you, you basically got to start from scratch from a standing start and you're just another replaceable commodity. That's not a great way to do business, especially as competition intensifies and especially as market compression continues to intensify, uh, rather uh, margin compression continues to intensify such that, you know, in many cases, in order to be competitive, you're making no money or you're losing money. You know, that's not going to work. You can't make up for a loss in profit with volume, right? Uh, especially if you're in the negative on that. So we want to make sure you're profitable and you're getting paid for your time. To do that, we need to work by referral. We need to work through third-party endorsement. We need to work in a context where you are are in a blue ocean, not a red ocean. In order to do that, you need to have those factors in place and have the lion's share of your leads 
coming through repeat and referral business versus crappy leads off the internet, you know, where you have to sift through a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets. So that being said, let's dive in. That's just kind of a precursor to highlight some of the areas that you want to be cognizant of uh, when it comes to high risk uh, scenarios that put you in a very precarious position. Now let's talk about the three steps to ins insulate yourself from those market conditions, from recession, from margin compression, from uh, you know, intensifying competition, et cetera. Okay. Three ways to insulate yourself. So you're least and last affected versus first and most. The first one is step one is build a well diversified solid stable of top producing realtor partners so there's a few key words there and they're intentional one of course is build that means it doesn't happen by accident you have to be intentional about it you have to be proactive about it you can't be drifting you got to be driving right you can't be waiting for the phone to ring you got to make the phone ring you can't just you know hope that you're going to make some solid partners you actually have to get off your duff, get off your assets and get to work, right? The other thing is well diversified. If you just have one solid partner or two solid partners or three solid partners, that's not enough. We need at least seven to 12 top producing rock star realtors who have made you their exclusive, who are sending you one, two, three deals a month. That way, if you happen to get one poached by a competitor, it's not the end of the world because you're well diversified. You can replace them and it's not gonna make that much of an impact in your income. But if you only have one, two or three solid partners and you lose one of them, you're freaking screwed, right? It's like, now you're in scramble mode. Now you're in stress mode. You don't wanna be operating from a place of desperation. You certainly don't wanna be uh, operating from a place where you're building your house on quicksand or on sand. You want to build your house on a solid rock. And that means a rock solid foundation that's well diversified. It's called, in, it's called building stability through diversification. And that's how you become recession proof because you're doing it on a solid rock of the purchase market instead of the quicksand of refis. Now, some of you might be big fan refis. You must love refis. And you're like, man, I'm all about refis. And that's cool. People need refis too, but you and I both know when it comes to building a recession-proof business that's the most predictable, the most reliable in any market, it's the purchase business all day long. So again, don't misconstrue my uh, strong sentiment as I you know, beat this uh, purchase drum like a cheap rap song. Don't misconstrue that as that I'm like poo-pooing refis. You know, if you can pick that low-hanging fruit, knock yourself out, but that low-hanging fruit is dried up. So let's be proactive, shall we? Let's be proactive to protect yourself from market downturns. The other key aspect of this is uh, top producers, like we talked about before, right? Going strategically with a laser focus to the top producers doing 20 plus buyer sides a year versus just hoping you get those or you know, going after the low producers because they seem easier and they seem more available and they're an easier yes. You know, I see a lot of mortgage professionals protecting and coddling their you know, inner child uh, going after the low producers because they're afraid of the rejection of the top producers. And they'll tell you a story that, you know, the top producers are prima donnas and the top producers are drama queens and the top producers are this and that and all this. And perhaps that's true. And certainly there are certain uh, realtors that are that. So I'm not saying that there aren't. But as a general rule, if you have a kick-ass value proposition, if you're a true professional, if you have a pleasing personality, if you have unique value no one else offers and you have a winner's mindset, there's always going to be eagles who want to soar with you because eagles like to soar with eagles. Eagles. They don't want to scratch around in the chicken yard with the chickens. They want to soar with the eagles. So water always seeks its own level. If you want to attract top producers, if you want to attract winners, you got to be a winner. You need to have a top producer mindset. And so that really comes down to the late and great Jim Rohn. He had a great quote. He said, you can't attract success. It will forever elude you like an elusive butterfly. You attract success by the person you become, by becoming an attractive person. And so that's where, you know, this is a personal development course with a compensation plan attached, right? The more you grow, the more your income grows. The more you grow, the more you develop mastery muscle, the, the more you're going to be able to lead by example and attract other top producers, other winners who want to roll with winners who are inspired by how you show up want to be in your energy orbit. They feel like you challenge them to become the best version of themselves and you lead by example. And you've got creative ideas and innovation and you're, you've got a deep reservoir of tools and systems and strategies and uh, all of this, you know, 
awesomeness that you bring to the table that no one else offers. And that makes you irreplaceable and indispensable. Indispensable. You become the only logical choice. To do that, you have to become a bigger, better version of yourself, true or not true. So that's step one is building that well-diversified stable of top producing realtors to the tune of say seven to 12. You don't need 40, you know, don't need 60, you don't need a hundred, just seven to 12 rock stars. And you could be making surgeon money, freedom money, do what you want, what you want with whom you want, anytime you want money, liberate your spouse money, travel first class, five-star money, all of that. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, you got seven to 12 partners sending you one, two, three deals a month. You do the math on that. That's like 30, 60, $80,000 plus per month in income, depending on your average loan size and your average commission per deal. So it's a pretty significant amount of money just from seven to 12 top producers. It's called going narrow, deep, and rich with just a few instead of shallow, wide, and skimpy with many. It's called working smart as opposed to just working hard. The second step to uh, positioning yourself to prosper, even in unprosperous times, is build your five-star online reputation. So you show up and shine online with more five-star reviews than any of your competitors. So you become the only logical choice. But don't, I'm already doing that. I'm getting reviews on Zillow. That's great for Zillow. But frankly, that doesn't really do much for you because people aren't searching on Zillow. They're searching on Google. Dorn, I'm getting some reviews on my website. That's great, but if they don't know about your website, that's not going to amount to a hill of beans, is it? We need to get reviews on Google because that's where they're searching on Google. So if you don't have a system to be able to turn your happy clients into five-star reviews and to be able to turn those reviews into more clicks, more calls, more cut, more cash from the local search, you're leaving a shit ton of money on the table. Just saying it right now. So it's really important we put those systems in place. And uh, that's one of the things we help our clients with, among many other things, is to be able to engineer that process systematically and reliably with an automated system. We have a system called the testimonial engine that helps our clients do exactly that. Turn key, plug and play, just st stick the key in the ignition and drive away. So why is it so important to get these five-star reviews? Why is it so important to build your online reputation? Because whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, your partners, your clients, your prospects are searching online to see if you're legit. They're not only searching for a mortgage professional in your area who's reputable, who's credible, who has a great reputation that they can trust to do business with. And there's certainly a nice steady stream of those that you can start to capitalize on who are hot for what you got before they even talk to you by virtue of your five-star reviews at the best quality lead you can ever get online straight from Google, hot for what you got. But also those who meet you, those who know that you exist, they're gonna do what's called cyber snooping. They're gonna do cyber snooping. And if they see that you have lackluster reputation, if they see you have a rather limp reputation, chances are they're gonna just skip right past you and go to your competitor who has a robust five-star reputation online. Because that makes, their choice feel more certain. It gives them more certainty, more five-star reviews, more trust, more trust, more sales. It's as simple as that. So you can't afford to be lackluster and limp and you know just kind of lackadaisical about this. We need to engineer a system so that every client you close for a, with rare exception, is converting into five-star reviews. So you just continue to get more and more clout and building more and more preeminence in your marketplace by virtue of those reviews. And again, it's the best quality lead you can ever get online, period, end of story. Someone who's already looked at your plethora of five-star reviews, they're pre-sold on you. It's like stick a fork in them, bring the barbecue sauce, baby. They're done like dinner, right? They're done. They're not going to be shopping you. They see all these brave reviews raving about you. They're like, man, I've seen your reviews. It looks amazing. Uh, we're going to work with you. What's next? And they're going to be like putty in your hands. So again, that doesn't happen overnight. That doesn't happen a day. It happens daily with a system that allows you to engineer that kind of a five-star preeminent reputation. The third step in the process to make you prosper in unprosperous unpro times and to you know mitigate the chance of regression in a regressionary, recessionary market is deploying a multi-pillared, multimedia database marketing system and series of marketing campaigns to maximize repeat and referral business. Now, if you're brand spanking new, obviously this is not super relevant to you, but if you've been in business for three years or more and you've got a database of 100 past clients or more, truth be told, you should be getting 
one to three deals per month for every 100 past clients. One to three deals per month for every 100 past clients. Well, what's the difference that makes the difference, Dorn, between the one for every 100 versus the three? It's all about mastery. The higher levels of mastery when it comes to being adept at mining the gold from your database and to be able to stay in touch and cultivate that relationship and have them stick to you like super glue and add consistent quality content and ask for referrals and delight and excite and exceed expectations and all that cool stuff that's all part of a wicked effective database marketing campaign and system is really the determinant as to whether or not you get the yellow belt level of referrals at one for every 100 past clients or you get the black belt level of referrals and repeat business uh, by virtue of the black belt level of mastery. So the more mastery you develop, the more mastery mus muscle you develop, the more you're going to be able to flex that when it comes to pushing the needle on profit and performance in your business and putting more zeros and commas in your bank account. But you want to have systems to be able to stay in front of your people. You can't just close the deal, drop them like a hot potato and hope that they stay with you for years to come. Because if you neglect them, which many mortgage professionals do, as I'm sure you're well aware, or if you're relying on your company's cookie cut crap campaigns to send snoring, boring campaigns and emails that put people to sleep, unless they're complaining about insomnia problems, chances are that's not going to serve you or the client very well, is it? We want to make sure that we're staying in front of them, quality content, engaging, relational, and we need different layers of campaigns to do that. Uh, weekly, monthly, annually, by email, by text, by direct mail, by social media. And if you're not doing that, and telephone, of course, and if you're not using all those different media types uh, through a you know multi-layered, uh, very consistent and frequent point of contact where you're sending the right message to the right people at the right time, chances are you're going to leave a shit ton of money on the table. So we just want to make sure that doesn't happen. And the way you do that, of course, is having some wicked effective campaigns. So if you're like Dorn, I don't really know how to do that. I'm great at doing loans. I'm great at finding a home for the loan. I'm great at closing on time. I'm great at delivering five-star service to my clientele. But all this marketing stuff, Dorn, it's like, it's just not my superpower. Well, I'm happy to tell you that where you are weak, we are unique. We've been doing this for 17 years. It's not a first rodeo. You may have noticed that uh, you know I have a certain amount of prowess and proficiency by virtue of putting in my rep. 17 years. I don't have to be a complete moron not to have this figured out after just under two decades of doing this. So that's a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage professionals hire us is to learn the secret sauce on how to top, attract top producing realtors to make their exclusive without the hell of cold calling, how to mine the gold from your database, maximize repeat and referral business, how to tip the scales of fortune of your, in your favor when it comes to getting your buyers, not just pre-approved, but under contract. We give the secret sauce for all of that inside of our wicked effective world-class coaching and marketing resources. That being said, if you'd like to explore whether or not you may be the right fit for us and we may be the right fit for you to help you take your business to a whole other level. I invite you to book a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. On that call, we're just going to have a real honest uh, conversation, you know, just in the real about where you're at now, where you want to be. And if we can help you create a breakthrough in your business, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. If not, frankly, we'll be the very first people to advise you to pass on our services, uh, perhaps recommend something else or someone else. But either way, you will leave that meeting with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we're going to have some fun. Unless you're really boring, then we won't. No, I'm just playing with you. But uh, in all realness, this is not a sales call. This is a clarity call. This is a call where we shine the light of truth on your situation to see if we can help you and diagnose and discern whether or not you're the kind of client that we can help create a monumental, unprecedented breakthrough result for and with. And to do that, we need to have an honest conversation and just see where you're at. And also to get clarity on the gap between where you are and where you want to be. And if that's the kind of gap we can help fill, because not every client is the right fit. So if you're open to that and you're open to getting more clarity in 60 minutes than you've ever had in a 60 minute time frame in your entire career, I kid you not, 
You're going to get clarity on this call like you've never had before if you're open to clarity. If you don't like clarity, if you don't like truth talk, if you don't like real talk, if you don't like to uh, just call a spade a spade in the spirit of harmony, collaboration, knowing we're in your corner on your team, here to serve you to your dream. But if you don't like to step into the light of truth and you prefer delusional optimism or apathy, then this is not the call for you. If you like knowing exactly where you're at, where you want to go in truth, in clarity, and you're open to, in some cases, the courageous vulnerability required to step into the light of truth around where you're at and the consequence of continuing to do it the hard way, if indeed you are, then if that's you and you're ready to really step into an opportunity to have the best, the best in your corner to help you with the clarity you need to know exactly what it's going to take to take your business from where you are to where you want to be, I invite you to book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. It's not going to cost a thing to book a call, but it could cost you a lot not to and lost deals, lost opportunities, wasted time, time you can never get back and paying a hefty tuition to the university of not knowing, not knowing how to get those solid partners, not knowing how to attract top producing realtors, not knowing how to mine the gold from your database, not knowing how to position yourself to be least and last affected by market downturns, not knowing how to build your business on a solid rock with a solid foundation, building a recession proof business that allows you to thrive while everyone else struggles to survive. So it's not going to cost you a thing to book the call and do the call, but it could cost you a lot not to. That being said, if you're down with an exploration to see what we can do for you, book the call, mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Well, it's been a pleasure serving you guys today. I trust you got some insight, some newfound wisdom. Maybe you got reminded more than you got uh, educated, but that's cool too, because often we need reminding more than we need educating. Uh, maybe you got some fresh new perspective. Maybe you got re reinvigorated on the things that need to be put in place. And perhaps you're like, man, I need to book a call because I definitely need some help in this area and my way ain't working. And if that's the case, that's cool too. Go ahead and do it right here, right now. Strike while the iron is hot. My name is Doran Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Be blessed. We'll see you on the next episode. And peace, y'all.